Hey, everybody. Today I'm going to tell you a true story. Sniper record holder and the number of enemy soldiers killed, for which his enemies nicknamed him the devil. The movie is from 2014 and it's called American Sniper. A column of U.S. troops slowly moves through the destroyed streets of an Iraqi city and they are covered from the roof of one of the buildings. Sniper Chris Kyle, Chris sees a man looking at the convoy and talking on the phone he is given the go-ahead to eliminate. But the sniper is not sure that this is not an ordinary civilian and the man leaves. Almost immediately the woman with a child comes out of the door and walks towards the convoy. Chris notices that the woman is carrying something and then gives the grenade to the kid. He leaves it up to the sniper to decide on the shot. But if the kid is a regular civilian, Chris will be sent to jail. In flashbacks, Chris hits a deer with his father on a hunting trip, and the father congratulates his son and runs to the prey, dropping his gun. A man tells Chris to never leave a gun on the ground. Chris attends church with his parents and younger brother Jeff. Later, Jeff is attacked by a bully. Chris sees this and knocks the boy down. The father tells his sons that there are three types of people in the world, sheep, wolves, and sheepdogs. Sheep believe that evil does not exist. Wolves use violence to oppress the weak, and sheepdogs fight back against the wolves and protect the flock. Chris is impressed. A few years later, Chris attends a rodeo and Jeff cheers on his brother. Chris comes home and catches his girlfriend in bed with another man. The man beats up the stranger and throws the girl out. She screams that she is not a cowboy but a farmer and leaves. The brothers see the news on TV about the terrorist attacks in Kenya. Chris watches the horror and wants to do something to protect the innocent citizens. A man arrives at a recruiting station where he is told his best choice is the Navy SEALs. Chris and the other recruits go through a harsh ordeal during which most of them will leave. Ice cold showers, constant moral humiliation, lifting at all hours of the day and long hours in the mud. Chris is constantly being picked on as he is in his 30s. Soon, however, the man is taken to sniper school. In a bar, Chris meets a girl named Taya. She says she will never marry a military man. As her sister had a similar sad experience, Taya decides to compete with the rat's forces in alcohol consumption, but quickly loses. A companion helps the girl out. Chris calls Taya until she agrees to meet him and the couple's relationship skyrockets. On their wedding day, their team receives orders to go to Iraq. We return to the scene from the beginning of the movie. When the woman hands the kid a grenade, he runs towards the convoy, but the sniper shoots him. The woman grabs the grenade and runs towards the military. But Chris shoots her after her, and the grenade explodes without hurting the soldiers. When the sniper returns to base, a fellow soldier congratulates him on his first hit target. Chris replies that he's never felt so fucked up in his life. Sniper continues to cover the backs of the soldiers mopping up the city. Chris destroys one by one enemy soldiers with weapons and bombs Sniper Day and Night covers his own. On his account is already six hit targets. And this is more than all the other snipers combined. His co-workers call Chris a legend. al is putting a bounty on his head. The enemy also has a super sniper, Mustafa, who is an Olympic champion marksman and almost impossible to track down. Chris is on the phone with his pregnant wife, Taya, while on combat duty and shocks his spouse with the news that his brother Jeff has also been deployed to Iraq. The fighters are told their primary objective is to track down terrorist leader Al Zarqawi. He leads 5,000 well-trained mercenaries. Chris can't watch the poorly trained infantry die below, but leaves his post and goes to the fighters. The soldiers are glad to see a legend around. In one of the buildings, they find a family who refuse to evaluate and say that this is their home. The head of the family tells them that everything in the city is run by al Zarqawi, who has a cruel assistant nicknamed the Butcher. For $100,000, the man gives the real name of the Butcher. Chris gives the base the butcher's name, and it turns out to be valuable information. The fighters bring the man the promised money. On the way, Chris calls his wife and she tells him they're having a boy. Mustafa takes a picture of their driver. Chris drops his phone in the commotion and his spouse hears the sounds of battle. Mustafa shoots one fighter after another, and Chris can't do anything as enemy snipers have them pinned in a corner. Butcher learns that the man has turned him into the military. 
For this, he massacres the man's eldest son. The man is also shot. Butcher yells that this will happen to anyone who talks to the US military. Butcher and Mustafa quickly leave. The group pulls back from the operation because they didn't check the area and lost a lot of fighters and are soon sent home. Taya is insanely happy to see her husband alive. Chris is trying to live a peaceful life. At the ultrasound, Chris' blood pressure is taken and it turns out to be very high. Taya is worried about her husband, but he replies that everything is okay. Suddenly, the woman goes into labor. The couple rushes to the hospital and a boy is born. Chris decides to return for a second tour of duty and meets his brother among the returning fighters. Jeff looks confused and devastated. He curses the horrors of war. The key goal of the group this time is to get the Butcher, who together with Al-Zarqawi still runs the city Chris is appointed commander of the group for his services. Co-worker Mark does not understand why Chris returned to Iraq, believing that he is addicted to the war. But the sniper justifies that his goal is to protect his soldiers. Intelligence reports that the Butcher may be in one of the buildings. The soldiers break in, but the owner replies that he has not heard of terrorists. The soldiers watch the suspicious house across the street, and the owner invites them to his holiday table. The soldiers dine, and Chris notices the host's red elbow characteristic of all snipers. The commander goes as if to go to the bathroom, and they search the house and find a cache full of weapons. Chris grabs the landlord and demands that he turn in the terrorists from the house across the street. The man opens the door, as he is known, and the sniper immediately shoots the enemy. Then he shoots the man who comes in. When he grabs a machine gun, the fighters clear the building. But the butcher leaves through the back door. The fight continues outside, where Chris destroys the butcher who tried to leave. Time passes, sun grows up, and in civilian life Chris flinches every time he hears loud noises. At the auto shop, a former military man thanks Chris for once saving a life in Iraq and invites him to the Veterans Center. The man tells Chris' son that his father, Hero, Taya is giving birth to Chris' second child, a baby girl. At the birthing center, Chris sees his screaming daughter and asks the nurse to help, but she is busy with another baby. And this infuriates the man Taya accuses her spouse of missing their children's childhood. The man has nothing to say in response and goes into his third term of service. Beagles brags that he bought a wedding ring here cheap. Chris warns that it could have been taken off a dead man. The military is attacked, but they fight back and chasing the enemy run onto a rooftop. However, it's an ambush. Mustafa and he hits Beagles tangentially in the head. The wounded man is taken to base and emergency surgery is performed. The SEALs return and destroy several enemy soldiers. But Mark is killed in a firefight. Chris returns home, but the war is now always with him. A sniper visits Beagles in the hospital. The fighter cries when he says his girlfriend didn't leave him, despite his mutilated face. Chris promises to return to Iraq and get revenge on Mustafa. When the man announces his decision to his wife and she thrashes around hysterically, Chris silently embraces his spouse. When the sniper arrives in Iraq, he is told that the enemy is knocking them out of position. It's been a few days now and all hell is breaking loose. He also learns that Beagles died in the hospital. The fighters are told that engineers are building a wall around the city to isolate Al-Qaeda, but the workers are constantly being shot from afar by a sniper. Chris realizes it's Mustafa. The squad is dropped right into enemy territory where the sniper is operating. Chris and his guys take a position on the roof, waiting for his eternal adversary to appear and calculate his approximate location. However, Mustafa takes a different point and shoots the worker on the wall. Crisis changes position. A sniper spots Mustafa. Two kilometers away from them, it's almost impossible to hit from that distance. Plus there's a lot of enemies around. And if they start shooting, they'll give away their positions. The fighters call the capture team to the building where the enemy sniper is lodged. Despite the commander's prohibition to shoot, Chris pulls the trigger and kills Mustafa from a great distance. The fighters are spotted by the enemies and run straight towards them. The cover group needs time to get to the military. In the meantime, they're in a tight enemy ring. The SEALs are shooting back, but more and more enemies are arriving. Chris calls his wife and tells her I'm ready to come home. A powerful field storm hits the warriors and in near zero visibility, the fighters drive down a pole to the ground. Reinforcements arrive and three SEALs jump into the transport. 
However, Chris is shot in the leg and falls from his last strength the sniper gets up and climbs into the car. Chris refuses to serve any further and returns home. However, the man has gone even more out of his mind. His children are cheerfully running around nearby, and he keeps sitting and staring at the TVs turned off. At a children's party, a dog playfully rolls a child to the ground. Chris takes this as a threat and wants to beat the dog until his wife starts screaming in terror. After the help of a psychologist, Chris finally establishes contact with his children and wife. The man teaches his son to hunt, saying that taking someone else's life is not nothing. Taya is insanely happy that her husband has finally returned to the family with all his soul, and Chris tenderly kisses his spouse. The former sniper wants to help rehabilitate another Iraq war veteran to chat and shoot with him at the shooting range. However, Chris never gets to come home. A veteran snaps and kills him at the shooting range. What do you think of the movie American Sniper? Share in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you soon.